Good day my Christian brothers and sisters and welcome everyone to our channel. In the name of Jesus, we pray that our Lord Jesus Christ will answer our prayer according to his great mercy. May God hear us and keep us close to his sacred heart. We now share with you all a message from Our Lady Mary. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can access the latest messages from heaven. Stay with us and listen to this video till the end. God has a blessing with your name on it, type Amen if you think it is so and let's say together the most precious prayer, which has been raised to heaven by the faithful of all nations from the beginning to the end of time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, so on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespassers. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Today we present messages given by our Lord Jesus Christ to Maria Valtorta, excerpts from the poem of Man God, The Adoration of the Wise Men. My internal voice warns me, call the contemplations you are about to receive and which I will tell you, the Gospels of Faith, because they will clarify for you and other people the power of faith and its fruits and will confirm you in the faith in God. I see Bethlehem, small and white, gathered like a brood of chickens under the stars, it is night. There is nobody in the streets, as it is so late. I notice that the night light is increasing, it descends from a sky crowded with stars, which are so beautiful in the eastern sky, they are so bright and large and seemingly so near that it is possible to reach out and touch those flowers sparkling in the velvet of the vault of heaven. I raise my eyes to see the source of the increasing light. A star of such unusual size that the moon seems small in comparison, is moving forward in the sky of Bethlehem. And all the others seem to vanish and make room for it, as maidservants do when their queen passes by, its brightness is such that it outshines them all. From the sphere, which looks like a huge pale sapphire lit up internally by a sun, a trail departs in which blonde topazes, green emeralds, opalescent opals, blood-red flashes of rubies and gentle sparklings of amethysts mingle with the prevailing pale sapphire. All the stones on earth are in the trail that sweeps the sky with a fast and undulating movement as if it were alive. But the prevailing color is the one emanating from the globe of the star, the heavenly pale sapphire hue which comes down and makes the houses, the streets, the ground of Bethlehem, the Savior's cradle, look like blue silver. It is no longer the poor town, which by our standards is smaller than a country village. It is a fantastic town of a fairy tale, all in silver. And the water of the fountains and of the vessels is liquid diamond. And with a brighter radiation of light the star stops over the little house on the narrowest side of the square. Neither the people dwelling in it, nor the people in Bethlehem see it, because they are all asleep in their closed houses, but the star quickens its shining pulsations and the trail vibrates and wavers faster and faster drawing a kind of semicircle in the sky. And the sky lights up because of the net of stars drawn by the trail, a net full of precious jewels which shine and color all the other stars with the most graceful hues, as if they were communicating their own joy to them. The little house is transfigured by the liquid fire of gems. The roof of the small terrace, the dark stone steps, the little door, are like a block of pure silver sprayed with diamond and pearl dust. No royal palace on earth has ever had or ever will have a staircase like this one, built to be used by angels and by a mother who is the mother of God. The little feet of the Immaculate Virgin can alight on that white splendor, the little feet which are destined to rest on the steps of God's throne. But the Virgin does not know. She is awake near her son's cradle and is praying. There are splendors in her soul which outdo the splendor with which the star is decorating material things. From the main road a cavalcade is approaching. Harnessed horses are led by hand, dromedaries and camels bear riders or are carrying loads. Their hooves make the sound of water that rustles and breaks against the stones of a torrent. When they reach the square, they all stop. The cavalcade, lit up by the star, is a fantasy of splendor. The harnesses of the most rich mounts, the clothes of the riders, their faces, their baggage, everything shines and the light of the star increases the splendor of metals, leathers, silks, gems, coats. 
Eyes are radiant and mouths smiling because another splendor shines in their hearts, the splendor of a supernatural joy. While the servants move towards the carvancery with the animals. Three members of the caravan dismount from their mounts, which a servant takes away at once, and they walk towards the house. And they prostrate themselves, touching the ground with their foreheads, to kiss the soil. They are three personages of power as is quite obvious from their very rich attire. One of them, of a very dark complexion, who dismounts from a camel, envelopes himself in a Siama, Ethiopian garment, of pure bright silk, held tight to his waist by a precious girdle, from which a dagger or sword hangs with a jewel-studded hilt. Of the other two, who dismount from two splendid horses, one is wearing a beautiful striped robe, the dominant color of which is yellow, fashioned like a long domino with hood and cordon which looks like a piece of gold filigree owing to the very rich golden embroidery. The third one is wearing a silk shirt puffing out of long large trousers, narrow at the ankles. He is enveloped in a very fine shawl which resembles a flowery garden, so bright are the flowers decorating it. And the vision ends here, it starts again, three hours later, with the scene of the Magi adoring Jesus. It is daytime now. The sun is shining in the afternoon sky. One of the servants of the three magi crosses the square and climbs the steps of the little house. He goes in. He comes out and goes back to the hotel. The three magi come out, each followed by his own servant. They cross the square. The occasional passers-by turn round to look at the stately personages who are walking very slowly and solemnly. A full quarter of an hour has elapsed since the servant came out and thus the inhabitants of the little house have had time to prepare to receive the guests. The magi are even more richly dressed than the night before. Their silk shine, the gem sparkle, a big bunch of precious feathers, covered with even more precious chips, quivers and shines on the head of the wise man wearing the turban. One of the servants is carrying an inlaid coffer, the metal reinforcements of which are all engraved gold, the second servant is holding a beautifully wrought chalice covered with a pure gold lid which is even more finely finished. The third servant has a kind of wide low amphora, also in gold, the cover of which is shaped like a pyramid at the top of which there is a diamond. The gifts appear to be heavy, because the servants are carrying them with some effort, particularly the one with the coffer. The magi climb the steps and go in. They enter a room that extends from the road to the back of the house. The little kitchen garden at the back can be seen though a window which is open to the sun. There are doors in the other two walls, and the owners, that is a man, a woman and some boys and younger children cast sidelong glances through them. Mary is sitting with the child in her lap and Joseph is standing near her. But she also gets up and bows when she sees the Magi entering. She is all dressed in white. She is so beautiful in her plain white dress which covers her from her neck down to her feet, from her shoulders to her slender wrists. She is so beautiful with her head crowned with her blonde plates, her face more rosy for the emotion, with her eyes smiling so sweetly while her mouth gives a greeting, May God be with you, that the three magi stop for a moment, completely astonished. They then proceed and prostrate themselves at her feet. And they ask her to sit down. They do not sit down, although she asks them to do so. They remain kneeling, relaxing on their heels. Behind them, also on their knees, are the three servants. They are immediately after the threshold. They have placed three gifts they were carrying in front of the Magi, and now they are waiting. The three wise men contemplate the child, who I think must be nine to twelve months old. He is so lively and strong. He is sitting on his mother's lap and smiles and prattles with a shrill voice like a little bird. He is all dressed in white like his mother, with tiny sandals on his little feet. His dress is a very simple one, a small tunic, from which his restless feet protrude, and his plump little hands which would like to get hold of everything, and above all, a most beautiful little face in which two dark blue eyes shine and a pretty mouth with dimples at the sides shows its first tiny teeth when it smiles. His pretty little curls are so bright and soft that they seem gold dust. This is the end of today's message, 
May God bless you and keep you close to his heart. Amen.